The Swift Programming Language, 5.6 edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Error Handling Error handling is the process of responding to and recovering from error conditions in your program. Swift provides first-class support for throwing, catching, propagating, and manipulating recoverable errors at runtime. Some operations are not guaranteed to always complete execution or produce a useful output. Optionals are used to represent the absence of a value, but when an operation fails, it is often useful to understand what caused the failure so that your code can respond accordingly. As an example, consider the task of reading and processing data from a file on disk. There are a number of ways this task can fail, including the file not existing at the specified path, the file not having read permissions, or the file not being encoded in a compatible format. Distinguishing among these different situations allows a program to resolve some errors and to communicate to the user any errors it cannot resolve. Note, error handling in Swift interoperates with error handling patterns that use the NS error class in COCO and Objective-C. For more information about this class, see Handling COCO Errors in Swift. Representing and throwing errors. In Swift, errors are represented by values of types that conform to the error protocol. This empty protocol indicates that a type can be used for error handling. Swift enumerations are particularly well suited for modeling a group of related error conditions with associated values allowing for additional information about the value of an error to be communicated. For example, here's how you might represent the error conditions of operating a vending machine inside a game. Throwing an error lets you indicate that something unexpected happened and the normal flow of execution cannot continue. You use a throw statement to throw an error. For example, this code throws an error to indicate that five additional coins are needed by the vending machine. Handling errors. When an error is thrown, some surrounding piece of code must be responsible for handling the error. For example, by correcting the problem, trying an alternative approach, or informing the user of the failure. There are four ways to handle errors in Swift. You can propagate the error from a function to the code that calls the function, handle the error using a do catch statement, handle the error as an optional value, or assert that the error will not occur. Each approach is described in a later section. When a function throws an error, it changes the flow of your program, so it is important that you can quickly identify places in your code that can throw errors. To identify these places in your code, write the try keyword or the try with question mark or the try with exclamation mark variations before a piece of code that calls a function, method, or initializer that can throw an error. These keywords are described in the later sections. Note, error handling in Swift resembles exception handling in other languages with the use of try, catch, and throw keywords. Unlike exception handling in many languages, including Objective-C, error handling in Swift does not involve unwinding the call stack, a process that can be computationally expensive. As such, the performance characteristics of a throw statement are comparable to those of a return statement. Propagating errors using throwing functions. To indicate that a function, method, or initializer can throw an error, you write the throws keyword in the function's declaration after its parameters. A function marked with throws is called a throwing function. If the function specifies a return type, you write the throws keyword before the return error. A throwing function propagates errors that are thrown inside of it to the scope from which it is called. Note, only throwing functions can propagate errors. Any errors thrown inside a non-throwing function must be handled inside the function. In this example, the vending machine class has a vend item named method that throws an appropriate vending machine error if the requested item is not available, is out of stock, or has a cost that exceeds the current deposited amount. The implementation of the vend item named method uses guard statements to exit the method early and throw appropriate errors if any of the requirements for purchasing a snack are not met. Because a throw statement immediately transfers program control, an item will be vended only if all of the requirements are met. Because the vend item name method propagates any errors it throws, any code that calls this method must either handle the errors using a do catch statement, 
try with question mark or try with exclamation mark, or continue to propagate them. For example, the buy favorite snack person vending machine in this example is also a throwing function, and any errors that the vend item named method throws will propagate up to the point where the buy favorite snack function is called. In this example, the buy favorite snack function looks up a given person's favorite snack and tries to buy it for them by calling the vend item named method. Because the vend item named method can throw an error, it is called with the try keyword in front of it. Throwing initializers can propagate errors in the same way as throwing functions. For example, the initializer for purchase snack structure in this listing calls a throwing function as part of the initialization process, and it handles any errors that it encounters by propagating them to its caller. Handling errors using do catch. You use a do catch statement to handle errors by running a block of code. If an error is thrown by the code in the do clause, it is matched against the catch clauses to determine which one of them can handle the error. Here is the general form of a do catch statement. You write a pattern after catch to indicate what errors the clause can handle. If a catch clause does not have a pattern, the clause matches any error and binds the error to a local constant named error. For more information about pattern matching, see patterns. For example, this code matches against all three cases of the vending machine error enumeration. In this example, the buy favorite snack function is called in a try expression because it can throw an error. If an error is thrown, execution immediately transfers to the catch clauses, which decide whether to allow propagation to continue. If no pattern is matched, the error gets caught by the final catch clause and is bound to a local error constant. If no error is thrown, the remaining statements in the do statement are executed. The catch clauses do not have to handle every possible error that the code in the do clause can throw. If none of the catch clauses handle the error, the error propagates to the surrounding scope. However, the propagated error must be handled by some surrounding scope. In a non-throwing function, an enclosing do catch statement must handle the error. In a throwing function, either the enclosing do catch statement or the caller must handle the error. If the error propagates to the top level scope without being handled, you will get a runtime error. The above example could be written so that any error that is not a vending machine error is instead caught by the calling function. In the nourish with function, if vend item named throws an error that is one of the cases of the vending machine error enumeration, nourish handles the error by printing a message. Otherwise, nourish propagates the error to its call site, the error is then caught by the general catch clause. Another way to catch several related errors is to list them after the catch, separated by commas. In this example, the eat item function lists the vending machine errors to catch, and its error text corresponds to the items in that list. If any of the three listed errors are thrown, this catch clause handles them by printing a message. Any other errors are propagated to the surrounding scope, including any vending machine errors that might be added to the enumeration later. Converting errors to optional values. You use try with the question mark to handle an error by converting it to an optional value. If an error is thrown while evaluating the try question mark expression, the value of the expression is nil. For example, in this code, x and y have the same value and behavior. If some throwing function throws an error, the value of x and y is nil. Otherwise, the value of x and y is the value that the function returns. Note that x and y are an optional of whatever type some throwing function returns. Here the function returns an integer, so x and y are optional integers. Using try with the question mark lets you write concise error handling code when you want to handle all errors in the same way. For example, this code uses several approaches to fetch data or returns nil if all of the approaches fail. Disabling error propagation. Sometimes you know a throwing function or method will not, in fact, throw an error at runtime. On those occasions, you can write try with the exclamation mark before the expression to disable error propagation and wrap the call in a runtime assertion that no error will be thrown. If an error actually is thrown, you will get a runtime error. For example, this code uses 
a load image at path function which loads the image resource at a given path or throws an error if the image cannot be loaded. In this case, because the image is shipped with the application, no error will be thrown at runtime, so it is appropriate to disable error propagation. Specifying cleanup actions. You use a defer statement to execute a set of statements just after code execution leaves the current block of code. This statement lets you do any necessary cleanup that should be performed regardless of how execution leaves the current block of code, whether it leaves because an error was thrown or because of a statement such as return or break. For example, you can use a defer statement to ensure that file descriptors are closed and manually allocated memory is freed. A defer statement defers execution until the current scope is exited. This statement consists of the defer keyword and the statements to be executed later. The deferred statements may not contain any code that would transfer control out of the statements, such as a break or re a return statement, or by throwing an error. Deferred actions are executed in the reverse of the order that they are written in your source code. That is, the code in the first defer statement executes last, the code in the second defer statement executes second to last, and so on. The last defer statement in source code executes first. The above example uses a defer statement to ensure that the open function has a corresponding call to close. Note, you can use a defer statement even when no error handling code is involved.